Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 5.1, which is multiplying and dividing rational expressions. If we recall, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction, where a and b are simply integers, such as 2 thirds, 1 seventh, maybe negative 5 halves, an improper fraction is still a rational expression. And that list, of course, could go on. Well, when we deal with rational expressions, that's where we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And we usually denote that as p over q, where p and q are just different polynomials. Here we have x squared minus 2x over x squared minus 4x plus 4, so on and so forth. We can have any combination of polynomial division. So one thing we have to recall when dealing with uh, rational expressions is the law that any number divided by 0 is undefined. We can never divide by 0. So when it comes to rational expressions, what we have to do is determine restrictions. What is the variable's value that might cause us to divide by 0? We can't divide by 0, so we'd have to eliminate that value. It is a restriction. So if I'm asked to find the restrictions of this rational expression, the first thing I concentrate on is, can I break it down? Can I factor it? So if uh, you're going to be using your rules of factoring in this section and continuing on throughout the rest of this course, make sure that your factoring skills are very strong. If we look at this, we can see it's in simplest form. There's nothing really that we can factor here. So if we look at it, we just have to concentrate on the denominator. What value of x would make this 0? So what I can do is I can set that denominator equal to x and solve for the value of x. Add 3 to both sides, I would get x equals 3. That would make our denominator equal to 0. That is our restriction. So our restriction is x such that x is not equal to 3. I could write it this way x such that x is not equal to 3. That would be our restriction in set notation. I could also write it in interval notation, which would be from negative infinity to 3 union 3 to infinity. These are the values that I can use. It just restricts 3 from being in that interval. All right, let's look at the next example here. Here we just have a single value of x. What value of x would make that equal to 0? Well, if x equals 0, that's our domain restriction. And I'm just going to leave it in algebraic notation. But you could write it in either one of the other uh, variations. Here, if we set this equal to 0, we have 4 over x squared plus 1. If we set that equal to 0, subtract 1 from both sides. Well, there is no value squared that would give me a negative. A negative times a negative is positive. A positive times a positive is, value, is a positive value. So there is no value that's going to make this equal to 0, because there's no value uh, squared, or at least no real value squared, that'll make it equal to negative 1. So there are no restrictions here. We can use any real number. All right, let's look at this. Now, I did mention that factoring was going to uh, come into play, and you're going to utilize it. It has to be a very strong skill that you possess. So if you need to, go back and review how to factor. For this example, <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is factor the denominator. Well, hopefully, we can look at this and recognize it as a perfect square trinomial. 81 is a perfect square of 9. And the middle value is twice 9. Well, it's negative 18, so it would be x minus 9 squared. So I was able to factor this denominator. Now that it's factored, I can set it equal to 0 and use the 0 factor theorem to find any domain restrictions. Well, to get rid of that square, I could take the square root of both sides. Or I could just say, well, what value of x would make this 0? Because 0 squared is still 0. And if we look at this, I can add 9 to both sides. x would equal 9. This would make my denominator 0. So that's my domain restriction. My domain restriction is x cannot equal 9. But if we were asked to simplify this example, we'd want to 
factor the top and the bottom, not just the bottom. We factor the bottom to find domain restrictions. But if we're asked to simplify it, we have to factor both the numerator and the denominator. So we've already factored the denominator. Let's factor the numerator. Are there factors of negative 72 that have a difference of 1? Hopefully, our factoring skills are strong enough that we can simply say, well, 9 times 8 would be 72. One of them would have to be negative since my middle term is negative. The larger value is the negative value. So this factors to x minus 9, x plus 8. Now we can simply reduce. If we're asked to reduce, I have the factor of x minus 9 on top, and I have two factors of x minus 9 on the bottom. So I can reduce one of them. So I end up with x plus 8 on the top over x minus 9 on the bottom. And notice our domain restriction is still there, but you identify any domain restrictions before you simplify. And you can see that we have x plus 8 over x minus 9, a much nicer uh, expression than this larger value here. We can see by simplifying it, it's something that we might have to work with later that's a little easier. Now, here we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 divided by 4 minus x squared, this rational expression. Um, if we look at the top, it's in descending order, just like we like to write our, numer or our uh, polynomials. We should also do that at the bottom, because essentially what's going to happen here is we might struggle with sign errors. I could factor a negative 1 out of this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite it in descending order negative x squared and a positive 4. I put my leading term first and put it in descending order, as we do with polynomials. So these are the same values. <clears throat> now, by doing that, I can say, well, I want this leading term to be positive. So maybe I factor out a negative 1. And now, maybe it's going to be a little easier to factor. Maybe we look at this and recognize that, hey, this is the difference of perfect squares. x squared is a perfect square of x times x. And 4 is a perfect square of 2 times 2. So I can factor it all the way down to x minus 2, x plus 2. Now, finding our domain restrictions, we'd set this equal to 0 and say, well, what would make this factor 0? What would make this factor 0? And we'd say, well, x could be positive 2 or negative 2. That negative 1, it was just a piece a constant that I factored out that's going to come along for the ride. So we know that our domain restrictions are x cannot equal positive or negative 2, these two different values, positive 2 or negative 2. Now, if I was asked to simplify this, I would also have to factor the top. And just like this one, I recognize this as to be a perfect square trinomial. 4 is a perfect square of 2, and 2 twice is 4. So I can factor this to x plus 2 quantity squared. Now, if we notice these factors down here, one of them is common. So I can reduce it. Anything divided by itself is 1. So one of these factors can reduce that factor. Now let's just assess what's left. I have this one factor of x plus 2 on the top, and this factor of x minus 2 on the bottom, and that negative 1. I'm just going to leave that negative 1 Outside. This is simplified to x plus 2 over negative 1 times x minus 2. I could distribute that through, but there's really no need to. This is in simplest form, and we know its domain restriction. x cannot equal plus or minus 2. Even though one of our domain restrictions reduced away, it is still a restriction. We can't put in that value because originally it would have made it undefined. All right, let's do a little review because we're ready to start multiplying and dividing now that we understand do, uh, restrictions. Now, if we're going to multiply two fractions or two rational numbers, we could multiply the numerators, we could multiply the denominators, and we'd get some pretty large values here. So instead of doing that, what we can do is we can reduce right away just like we did uh, in the previous examples. I can factor and reduce. Well, 15 is 3 times 5. And 8, I know, is 2 cubed. So I just factored it down. 27 is 3 cubed. And 30 is 2 times uh, 
15, which is 3 times 5. So I'll just factor it to 2 times 3 times 5. So we factored it down. Now we can start reducing. Well, if I have a common factor, just like we did before, we can reduce them. There's one 2 on the bottom. That can reduce one of the 2's on top. There's two 3's on the bottom. That can reduce two of the 3's on top, because we have three of them. So that would reduce those two 3's, so we only have one on top. Now, if we think about it, now we reduced it. And the largest value we had to deal with were what we started with. Now we just put it back together. We have two factors of 2, which is 4, times one factor of 3, which is 12, right? 4 times 3 is 12. And on the bottom, we have 5 times 5, which is 25. So by factoring, we can actually simplify this and not have to deal with values any larger than what we're given. And we were able to multiply it to get 12 25ths. What about division of fractions? Now, hopefully, we were recall that if we divide by a fraction, we actually change it to multiplication by multiplying by its reciprocal. And the reciprocal just means you take the second fraction and you flip it, 32 over 21 instead of 21 30 seconds. Now I can do the same thing I did before. Now, I know that 8 can go into 32 four times. So instead of breaking it down into a factor tree, I can just simply reduce it that way. And I know that 7 can go into 21 three times. So this essentially reduced to 1. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 times anything doesn't change that value. And so what's left? 4 over 3. So the answer is 4 thirds. So 7 eighths divided by 21 30 seconds is 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third. But we can leave it as an improper fraction. All right, let's look at multiplication of uh, rational expressions. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to simply reduce. So let's deal with the numbers first, and then we'll deal with the variables one piece at a time. If I look at this, I know that 4 can go in the 8 twice. And I know that 7 can reduce that 14 to 2. And now 2 over 2, well, that just reduces to 1. So I have 1 times whatever x's are left. Well, x cubed on top, and I have two x's on the bottom. Well, each one of these x's in the denominator can cancel or reduce an x on top. So two of these can reduce two of those, making it a 1. Now that I've reduced it, what's left? Well, I have 1 times x to the first, which is just x. So <clears throat> this may get a little messy, but if we understand the process, we're just reducing, cross-reducing our numbers, simplifying our variables, and coming to our conclusion through this multiplication. And we're not having to deal with any values like 14 times 4 to get a large value, or 8 times 7 to get that 56. Our largest values are what we are given. All right, let's look at this example here. Now, like before, we had factored. We can factor polynomials just like we can factor numbers. So I'm going to start with the first one, x. There's just a single factor there. I can't reduce it. Here I have 7x minus 21. Well, I know 7 and 21 have a common factor. So I'm going to factor out a 7. And that leaves me with x minus 3. So this is the same as 7 times x minus 3. If we look at this value, I can factor out an x, because each of these terms contains an x. And that leaves me with x times x minus 3. And now that everything's reduced, x and 5, those are just factors that are prime. Well, I can't reduce them. Now I can reduce the common factors. I have an x minus 3 on top and an x minus 3 on the bottom. Nothing else is going to reduce here. There's, on top, I have two x's. And on the bottom, I have a 7 and 5. Nothing common. Nothing's going to simplify to 1. So now I can actually multiply the numerators together. x times the remaining factor of x is x squared. And 7 times 5 is 35. So we get x squared over 35 from this multiplication. All right, let's look at this one here. Obviously, they're getting a little bit more complex. We have to factor. So I'm going to factor uh, the numerator here. What are the factors of 18 that would combine to give me negative 11? And I know it's combined because this is addition. Both of the signs have to be the same. They're either both positive or both negative because this is a product. 
So <clears throat> I know 9 times 2 is 18. And I know 9 plus 2 would be 11. To be negative 11, it's going to factor to x minus 9, x minus 2. Negative 9 times negative 2 is 18. Negative 9x's and negative 2x's is negative 11x's. Recall factoring. If you're a little rusty on that, definitely a review. Now I'm going to factor the bottom here. The factors are negative 36 that have a difference of 5. And I know it's a difference because this is negative. It means as a product, they had to have different signs. So I combine to get this difference. So I'm going to factor this. I know the factors of 36 are 9 and 4. But which one's positive and which one's negative? Well, their sum is negative, so the larger value had to be negative. Review your factoring. All right, and this rational expression doesn't factor. x plus 4 is prime and x is primes, because we don't know what x is. We have to treat it as a prime number. Now we're ready to reduce. This x minus 9 can reduce this x minus 9. This x plus 4 can reduce this x plus 4. And if we look and see what's left, x minus 2 and x, well, this is on top, our numerator. And on the bottom is just x. So we've simplified this multiplication and didn't really have to multiply any huge numbers together. Let's look and see how this same concept applies to division of rational expressions. Well, just like fractions, because that's all these really are, is when we have division, we have to multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second value here, because I'm dividing. So I'd multiply by its reciprocal. And now I can do it exactly as I did in the previous examples, because now it's multiplication. So I can uh, factor. Well, this piece is already factored. That's convenient. This piece, we can factor out a 2. And now we can simplify um, by reducing. I have an x minus 9 as a factor on top, which reduces an x minus 9 on the bottom. Anything divided by itself is 1. 1 on top over 1 on the bottom is 1. We can say 3 goes into 9 three times, so we reduce that. Here I have an x on the bottom. It can't cancel this x because this is a factor. You can't cancel terms of a factor. But this is an x squared all by itself. So this factor of x can reduce one of those two factors of x. Now let's just assess what's left. I have x minus 12 times 3x. So I'd have 3x times x minus 12. And I'm going to leave it in this form. And here, that reduced. The only factor in the denominator is a 2. I cannot reduce these values because this is in parentheses. These are terms. I can't reduce terms, only entire factors. So from this, I got something a little more simplified, 3x times x minus 12 divided by 2. All right, let's look at the next example. Again, it's division. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rewrite it to be multiplication. And I do that by multiplying by its reciprocal. Now I'm ready to factor. Well, hopefully, we recognize this as the difference of squares. And I'm going to rewrite it down here, a plus b times a minus b. The difference of terms from the difference of squares. And if we factor the next term, all I can do is factor an a out of the top. a is a common factor. So we get a times a, the quantity a minus b over 2a. And now we're ready to reduce. Now, if we reduce this, well, I see an a plus b as an entire factor on top can reduce the a plus b as an entire factor on the bottom. And now I look at, and I see an a is common on top and an a is common on the bottom. I can reduce those. Nothing else is common. Both of these are on the top, so I can't reduce them. So all I can do is multiply them. I have a minus b times a minus b, a value times itself. I can write it as a minus b squared over the only remaining factor in the denominator is 2. All right, so the next example, I'm going to actually leave for you to try. Okay, So you're going to notice 
This is 6 minus x. Maybe you want to write that in descending order and uh, factor out something. And then you're going to want to write the reciprocal of this and factor that. Do it just like in the last examples, and I'm sure you'll do just fine. Keep practicing, and thank you for watching.